Hello everyone, this is Christian Melodexton Interactive, and in this video we are going to talk about the Webpack Bundle Analyzer plugin. We're going to set it up so that it runs only when we want it to run, and when it does run then what happens is it starts up a little web server and it gives us this graphical representation of our bundles. And we also get this sort of uh, you know sidebar telling us what are the various sizes of our uh, bundles and this allows us to look through them and say you know you know start picking and choosing the things that we're importing you know making sure that they provide enough functionality to justify the size of them or in the case of the example at the end of this video making sure that we are importing the way that we think that we're importing so that we only pull in what we want and not a whole bunch of extra stuff. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started here. So of course, first thing that we need to do is to uh, install a package from npm. So the package that we're going to be installing is the Webpack Bundle Analyzer plugin and version number 2.13.1. All right, so back to Visual Studio Code and we're in the webpack.config.js file. So we want to include this. So we'll have const and bundle analyzer plugin is require bundle yeah, webpack bundle analyzer perfect and then dot bundle analyzer plugin all right plugin so we'll return to our plugin section here so for the moment we'll just do the uh, plugins dot push and new bundle analyzer plugin Go ahead and save that. We'll return to our <laughs> terminate. So we'll return to the console. We'll do whole npm run build command. And you'll see once the bundles are built, we get this webpack bundle analyzer. It started on, you know, basically localhost 8888. And uh, what it looks like is this thing here. So uh, you know, if we have more than one bundle, you know, it'll tell us what the size of those bundles are or in this section here. But we can see right now that our index bundle, which basically just contains our console log statement, plus a little bit of code where it pulled out the styles from the JavaScript. But we'd come in and gzipped at 33 kilobytes. Thing is, is that way down here, probably might be hard to read if zoomed it in a bit, but so this is the source folder down here, the source source area. That source is 882 bytes, and that's our code. The rest of this is code. Some of it is for Webpack to work, but a lot of it is because we have hot module replacement enabled, and that includes code. Um, to make that work. So let's go ahead and close this and close this other one uh, where it's from. Stop this server here. So what we want, what we care about is the size of the bundles that we'll be um, deploying, that a user will be uh, you know, having to download. So instead of including the bundle analyzer plugin every time, what we're going to want to do is just to have it included in, say, sort of production builds. So what we'll do is go back to our package.json file. And what I want to do is to create another script here. I'm going to make a new one. So build and I'll put build colon prod. So we want production. We'll change this from development to production. So we'll set this flag to production. And we'll even do this little dash p over here. With that webpack might do some optimizations of its own. So go ahead and save that. And actually what we need is the console again. Same command, npm run build. Get our new one to pop up here and bring it over. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. 
So what I wanted, right? I'm sorry, seen that. I want colon production. I'll just pretend like I intended to do that. Great, so now uh, our bundle comes in at 471 bytes. 180 of it is what Webpack needs to work. And 129 is from our code, where 126 is a TypeScript and 37 bytes is the SCSS that's left over after it's been pulled out. All right, so we're down to 471 bytes, where we were 33 kilobytes. All right, let's go back and stop that server once again. Next bit is, is that, so there's plenty of times where I will want to run um, Hmm. Hmm. I'm stopping because I was going to change something to begin with. Well, we'll sort of skip it. What I did, actually, we'll go back and do it this way. We already saw the result, but hey, you know, pretend like we did. So what I would, what I was going to do is say add a new variable is prod, and that's mode is equal to production in that case, and wrap this thing in an if is prod, pull it up here, perfect, right? So now we can run development, we wouldn't get the bundle analyzer. We run production, we get bundle analyzer, okay. So now the thing is though, is there are times in which I want to have a production build where I don't want to have the analyzer run, right? I'm getting ready to deploy and just to be super sure that I'm up to date to run a production build and then deploy it up to wherever it's going. And, you know, the way it sits now is if I did that, it would open up this browser and start the server and have to stop and close the browser. And I just don't want to deal with all that, right? So what we'll do is instead of having it worry about, you know, just triggering if it's a production build, we'll return to our package.json file and add a new script. So we're going to change this one from production to analyze. And so we'll leave the rest of that the same, except that in here, we're going to set another variable and just to stick with the notes, what we had, bundle, underscore, analyze. And this is just an attempt to come up with something that, you know, hopefully won't name clash with something else. I don't really care what it's set to. We'll just set it to true there. Return to the webpack.config file. We go back to the very top and I'll make another one here. Const is analyze and that's equal to uh, in this case we'll just do type of and process dot env dot the bundle underscore analyze if that's not undefined then where we want to analyze so I don't like I said don't care what it's set to as long as it's set to something instead of is production this becomes is analyze so we'll save that Go back up here just to see. So npm run production. So build, nothing happens. If we go in, npm analyze. Well, that was not supposed to happen. <laughs> what is our problem now? Analyze, type of process. Cannot spell. Analyze. Analyze. Try that again. Perfect. There we go. So now we're back to working. Analyzing is going on. And at this point, we can look through the sections. We'll have graphical representation of what's included. And we can say, hey, maybe I, you know, the functionality that I'm getting from this thing is not enough to justify the size of it. Or, let's do this, um, give a little example here. Examples are good. To do this example though, I'm gonna use some icons from Fawn Awesome, so in case you're curious to you know what's going on, these are the packages that I'm gonna use real quick, and these are their version numbers. So it's real similar to something, I was working on a project, you know, getting towards the end, 
time to figure out, you know, to optimize things a bit. Packages, the, the bundle, at least the vendor bundle, the common bundle is always it's going to be very large. But the thing was even larger than I was expecting. It's about four megabytes. So, you know, bundle analyzer plugin. Let's take a look and see what's in this thing. So, uh, so for our example here, what we need to do is to create a couple files. Let me go to the source folder here. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it index dash f a font awesome dash all dot ts and in here new file index dash f a dash single dot ts so inside of the all you know read the documentation sort of tells us what we have to do to make these things work so at font awesome from the core we'll get library and then from the icons, I just use the top one. I don't really care what the icon is. And uh, from here, we're supposed to say library add and the thing that we imported. Okay, doesn't look very special. Doesn't look, this is the way I'd import most things, right? Let me go ahead and grab this, save it, go over to this one. So instead, what we'll do is come over here and at the end of this, address book. Give me a little space. All right. So to compare these things, what I want to do is compare the bundle size. So we have to create bundles. I'm going to also comment out the index just to have a, we don't have the index to pop up on us. So we'll create a bundle, index dash FA all. And that's just coming from source and index dash FA dash all.ts and index dash fa dash single so, oops, source index dash fa dash single dot ts if I've spelled everything correctly then should now work go back to our console run the same command again and we'll see now since we have multiple bundles, it'll pop up over here. So the top one, index dash FA dash all. So that thing's coming in gzipped at 167 kilobytes. The single is coming in at 11 kilobytes. It's not exactly what was happening, but it's very close. You know, I open up this bundle and I see a megabyte worth of fun awesome icons and figure, hmm, I'm doing something wrong. So in the case that, uh, so in, in the FA all uh, file here, the way that we're importing here, this thing works fine. If the project is conf configured for Webpack to do tree shaking, then you have nothing to worry about. The single one is whether, I mean, it works regardless of, of whether or not tree shaking is enabled in the project. And, you know, between the two, it's, it's very, very simple to, you know, do one and not the other and thinking that you're only going to get the one icon you're wanting and you end up getting all of them from that package, right? So this, uh, the, the bundle analyzer plugin is a very, uh, very useful uh, plugin. I think that, uh, that wraps it up for, for this video. So I'll, I'll talk to you later. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. I know that your time is valuable. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and click the thumbs up button as well as share the video with your friends. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. And once again, thank you and I will talk to you in the next video.